Thank you and welcome from my side to this um, talk with a title that might uh, sound rather paradoxical or, or seemingly um, illogical. And I hope we uh, will be able to decipher a little bit um, what is meant. One of the starting points, I guess, for this exhibition, or one of the motivations, um, might be the exhibition from Harun Mirza, which takes place right now in the um, Chantagli Museum, here, right here in Basel. And as you can see, the, this is the catalog which goes with it. And as you see, um, the title of this exhibition is called Harun Mirza HRM 199 LTD, which is his, uh, actually the name of his studio. And you have a, a, um, a whole range of other names on this book, which are all people. Uh, who cooperated with him on this exhibition. And one of the persons, and then I go over to presenting the, the other panelists, is Mattia Bosco, who was um, uh, developing actually one of the pieces, or pieces of one of the pieces from the exhibition, from um, this exhibition, from Harun Mirza. So, well, uh, so I'll present uh, two more words about you and then all of you. <laughs> Uh, you yourself, you're also an artist working uh, in, in the area of sculpture often. And as I read that you are also working as a designer, that's one of the reasons why Harun Mirza was um, inviting you to work um, with him on exactly what you did uh, in this show. We're getting back to look closer what exactly this was later on. Um, then... Uh, we have uh, right beside uh, Mattia, we have Samuel Salemakers. No, that's not, that wasn't right. Salemakers, okay, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> um, he is an associate curator at the Witte de Witt Museum since 2012. And um, he has a certain amount of experience with uh, these kind of exhibitions where uh, someone is invited doing a solo show and then inviting other artists or people um, to cooperate on all different kind of levels. And then um, we have Naomi Fisher, who is also an uh, artist again, uh, working and living in Miami. And on her website, she presents herself with uh, the website, actually the title of the website is uh, Naomi Fisher Studio. And perhaps we're going to have an insight in what this studio aspect of her work uh, means. Besides that, she's also running an artist-run space. So she has this curator uh, vision also. So I would like to start with... Um, giving you some insight in your practice in this solo show as a group show. And perhaps we might start with you, uh, Mattia, and you might... Um, um, okay, just to, to give you a, <laughs> an information, Mattia will talk in uh, Italian and um, the translator will give the version in English. So, can you describe how you have been working together with uh, Mattia, how did, uh, Mattia, with uh, Harun, how this work has been... Uh, how it has been developed, your cooperation. So, um, in italiano. Aaron mi ha, mi ha chiesto di integrare all'interno di una scultura in pietra pannello solare, eh, suono e LED, tecnologia LED. So, Arun Merza uh, asked uh, Mattia to um, uh, make a sculpture, uh, in a stone sculpture, as uh, his usual practice. Mattia mainly makes sculptures with stone and marble. And uh, in this sculpture, there should have been a place for um, a solar panel and uh, some LEDs. And also some space for um, a speaker, which um, should have been integrated inside of a sculpture. For the rest, Mattia had uh, full freedom to design the sculpture as he wanted. So it was a really um, collaboration with an artist rather than a commission on please do this as a stone carver. In fact, uh, um, I think on the, era nel futuro del museo, c'è una 
In fact, uh, there is a little bit of a discrepancy on the Tingly website, uh, in which they define him as a um, um, stonemason, because he's actually an artist, not a stonemason. <laughs> Questo tocca un punto importante, no? perché ehm, dire scalpellino o dire scultore è profondamente diverso. No? E se la cosa interessante e la cosa paradossale che c'è nel, nel, nello soggetto stesso del, del, del talk che stiamo trattando adesso, cioè a solo show is a group show, no? è questo aspetto paradossale no? per cui... Um, se un, un, um, un artista viene invitato da un museo e poi introduce all'interno di un museo altri artisti a collaborare ma a collaborare <coughs> da artisti e non diciamo da prestatori di opera chiamiamoli così eh, traduci so Let's consider the situation in which an artist has been invited to do a solo show by an institution, and she or he presents them instead with a group show. The other artists come to be part of a show through the artist and not by the museum. That's no small difference. Yes, uh, exactly. So this was the first time you have actually been cooperating in this kind. Usually you like realize whether the, the position is much more clear. Usually you realize whether something which is commissioned, then you are, the, you are just transforming it actually. You are just producing it. And here it was, you would say that you are um, part of the artwork. You are a co-author with, uh, with uh, Harun. Not really. He doesn't usually do commission works. So he always operates as an independent yeah, artist. Just, okay. But this, anyway, was the first time you have been cooperating with... In, 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 in a modo simile, sì. Yeah, yes, this is the first time he has worked with another artist. Like this, and as a collaborator. Feel, yeah, okay. And do you feel well represented the way you are represented in this still somehow solo exhibition? Assolutamente, assolutamente. Penso che mh, eh, la cosa straordinaria che poi <coughs> succede o può succedere quando due artisti collaborano è che entrambi eh, lavorano, non, eh, lavorano individualmente magari, ma lavorano attratti da, da qualcosa che, che, che è come un polo di attrazione, che è un, è un terzo, è l'opera che, che, che cresce, è l'opera verso cui tendono che come un terzo attrae il lavoro di entrambi. Quando quest'opera poi è realizzata, eh, è veramente un terzo che integra il lavoro di entrambi, e nel quale il lavoro di entrambi e anche la poetica di entrambi è riconoscibile, più qualcosa di diverso. So, Mattia is speaking about uh, an idea of um, um, a third, so he's saying, through a collaboration of two artists, uh, it comes out uh, a work. And this work uh, uh, is made by a third author. It's uh, this author that cannot be interviewed, cannot uh, speak, and uh, maybe appeared only once. But um, it's still uh, both individualities of the artists have been um, uh, submitted, let's say, to a work. Like the work is the most important thing. Through and um Okay, thank you. So, Naomi, you also have uh, quite a range of uh, experience with cooperations on, on all different kind of levels. Um, could you give us an insight? You also brought some pictures we might uh, perhaps uh, see them now, and also perhaps focusing on this aspect, how do you also um, represent uh, those cooperations? Yeah, um, the images that I'm going to be showing are more of a specific part of the practice that relates to this, which is working with contemporary dance performers. 
Um, so in the first image that I'm showing is an exhibition that I did where I worked with a choreographer to create a new dance work that was performed at the opening based on a video that I made of a different performance in the show and that was performed with the artworks in the exhibition. So this is just one example of it where I worked with a choreographer and had a dialogue and collaboration with her to create a new work that was really her work but done based on one of my artworks in an exhibition. And then, um, th ready for the next slide. Um, this is a show I did last summer at Home Alone 2 Gallery in New York, which is an artist-run space that's done by Leo Fitzpatrick and Nate Lohman that's now closed. But um, for this project, you know, I've, I've been really realizing how long and in-depth my collaboration with dancers has been. And I started to make works that were paintings, that were also sculptures, that were also props for performance, but still exist as individual artworks themselves. And in that, in this particular image is uh, Biba Bell and Jesse Gold performing with my paintings. Biba is like an incredible choreographer and dancer. She just did a site-specific performance in a Mies van der Rohe building in Detroit that was incredible that I flew out to see. And um, Jesse Gold is an incredible dancer and dance curator. Um, she used to be one of the people who ran this dancer-run space called Cafe Dancer in New York. And um, yep, so this is them performing with my painting. And uh, the next image. And then this is a project at Art Basel Miami Beach uh, last December, where I created more of these paintings with ballet bars and invited dancers to perform with them. And there's a, one more slide of that. And so this is maybe the most current, in-depth, specific practice I'm doing like this. But in working with so many people who are performers, they often have their own visual arts practice as well. So in running an artist-run space, I've often invited these women who are performers to do solo exhibitions of both their visual art and their performance art. And in other projects, I've often invited people to perform in my works. I've collaborated with other artists um, with gelatin, maybe the best example, I did a seven day long trapped or locked in a box called the Tantamounter um, during Performa maybe seven or eight years ago and have worked with them on other projects as well. So there's all these different layers of how I work with other artists, whether I'm working with them, they're working with me, I'm inviting them to do shows, sometimes I'm supporting their artistic practice in a curatorial context and there's just multi-layered way of working that's for me is as much about nourishing a creative community than having s solo authorship being the prime importance. So there might be, uh, probably there is a very different range of uh, intensity when working together, but how should we, um, when it comes to those exhibitions you just uh, described, how uh, could do you or would you describe this way of this very on a conc very concrete level somehow it is cooperation? Well, every every relationship and every exhibition is different. So in some of the works, I feel like I'm function more as a film director, where I'm inviting like a star actress or an incredible writer or someone to make a soundtrack and credit them accordingly. And in other cases, it's really a direct co collaboration where that's credited accordingly or an artist like a choreographer making a specific dance for it and then that's their individual work. So it's this complicated layering and I think that's one of the interesting things about a conversation like this. It's like when, when are you having an individual practice? When are you having a collaborative practice? And when is there the lines completely blurred and it it's difficult to define? But you would say today it's it's kind of like normal that this one, that uh, cooperating is an option. Uh, so because one of the things I think is is uh, rather interesting when looking from outside on biographies of artist biographies, they still work in a very stereotypical manner. Obviously, so you first have solo shows, then you have group shows, um, and but obviously that doesn't represent what's going on. I think especially in younger generations, it's much more fluid, and being an artist is more about kind of having a dialogue with other artists and like what what can art be how do you push art in these different ways and it's not always this, an individual practice anymore and you do want to uh, represent that by inviting and 
Yeah, I feel like it's, you know, maybe an, a different model is an artist who has a mega studio and employs other artists to create their work. And there's still a dialogue in that, but it's still like this primary author. But I think maybe perhaps different generations are more interested in attributing all the authors and being considered more of a director than a sole artist sometimes. I mean, there's sometimes where, you know, it can go both ways. Okay. Um, and Samuel, you have the perspective, or you represent here in, on this panel, you somehow represent the perspective of the curator working um, with exhibitions where a solo show turns into a, to a group show. So would you describe some of your experiences you, res you just recently had or you are still working on? Um, when I received the invitation for this panel and I saw the title, I immediately thought that's actually what we've been doing with two um, individual projects at Witsit Wit. One in the past and one upcoming. Um, both of them apply to this subject, but I think in very different ways, so it might be interesting to talk about the difference um, between both um, cases. The first one was an exhibition we did. Um, it was a solo show by A.A. A. Bronson. Um, and it was announced as such, but this is where I think the um, politics of an institution kick in. It was a solo show, but he brought along his gang, his posse. If, if, if you're familiar with uh, A. A. Bronson's work, that is precisely what he does. He is such a mentor. He um, is a, He's an example for many young um, artists as well, and he embraces everything they bring to um, to the table, and he is happy to collaborate with them always. So in, the, in that sense, I guess you could see it as a generous gesture of his side to want to include more than only his own artistic uh, statement, but include those of others that have been touched, sometimes literally, by him in... Um, in their respective practices. Um, and I think in, in this particular case, so again, speaking from an institutional point of view, then the question arises, okay, but who do we list on the invitation? Who do we list on the website? Who are, who are the participating artists? Is this, is this only A.A. Bronson? And then by accident, there's other works by other artists? Or, and in his particular case, which again is very um, telling of his practice, is that he included them, all of them, in a listing that said the living and the dead. Because some of the artists that he was including, some of the work he had been showing, uh, was by artists who are no longer with us. And I think that kind of illustrates that in these kind of hybrid formatted shows, all you have to do is listen to the artists themselves who bring, who will tell you how they want to structure this. So the question, of course, of authorship that you brought up, that you brought up, and in a way, if we're honest, also the question of ego kicks in as well. Um, and that is, of course, a delicate, a delicate position sometimes, one that as a curator, you're kind of in between as well, and you have to make everybody happy. Um, so in the case of A.A. Bronson, I think it was a very clear statement of shared practice, a shared universe, more so, I think. Um, then in the other case, I'll, I'll talk about next. But one thing I was also thinking when you say um, solo show as a group show, in a sense, is that every... Um, and I think the uh, Harun Mirza show is probably a very interesting case. Um, because it's a bit, it's a bit more blurry. <coughs> how, who else is involved or isn't involved? On what degree? Um, as, as, um, as we've heard already, is that every solo show, in a way, has to be seen as a group show? Because every artist, of course, has other artists that they've been looking at, has other artists they've been speaking to. So, in in a sense, as every solo show is a result of a filtering or negotiation by this solo artist of how much do I show of my inner group show in my head. Um, and I think that's what makes solo um, exhibitions interesting. And I did think this is something that, as a curator, is very interesting, or is the challenge when you're doing a solo show with an artist, is that how much do you keep hidden and how much do you share? And I mean, there's loads of um, examples these days also of um, the artist as collector showing showing the inner museum or the inner group show of, of a solo art. And I think that's a very interesting practice and a very individual one as well. Um, bringing along all sorts of complications for, as I mentioned, the institution. Um, the other case that I'm working on currently, uh, which is a very different approach from the one from A.A. Bronson, is by a writer and artist Douglas Copland, who most of you know, of course, as a, as a writer. Um, 
And we're preparing an exhibition with him in September, uh, which is a solo exhibition. And in his case, we are showing works that he's been collecting throughout the years. But he's not, he's not a collector as such, that make, especially here at Basel. It makes him sound like, a, um, like an actual professional collector who might be investing. Or, but it's really the opposite. It's really like you and me. I invite the A5 postcards that we receive in the mail of exhibitions with a pretty image. He's in, he's in that, almost in the same way, collecting images that he finds interesting, objects he finds interesting. Sometimes there are actual artworks of local Vancouver artists. Sometimes there's a, there's a mini Jenny Holzer in there. So it's a, a completely weird collection that only makes sense, I guess, if you're Douglas Copland. And so for this exhibition, um, we are trying to bring the mindscape of Douglas to, to the exhibition. Since he is such a prolific writer and a thinker, we don't want to only show his visual practice, but kind of find a way to bring across the, to the audience a broader scope. Again, also, just like A. Bronson, this universe that you want to share. Um, but in the case of Douglas, it, it, it makes no sense to list all of these artworks that we are showing. First of all, because none of these artists who made these works that he um, that he wants to sh show um, are actually involved in this process. He, this is, like, I guess, also the difference in when you own a work or when you're inviting another artist. I, I think that goes to show how sometimes owning a work severs the relationship with the artist that created it in a way. Um, so I think and these are two different approaches, approaches to a similar output, but I guess the way they're being communicated is very different. And I think this is what I mean when I say you filter the kind of how much does an artist want to share and how much does he want to convey um, what it is that he is doing or she is doing in their individual practice through sh showing more than just that. And what does it change for you as a curator in an institutional frame when you, like, I mean, obviously it's different than curating a group show. That's completely something, uh, completely or not completely, but it's probably something different. It, it is completely different because I'm not the one choosing choosing the works in in a way. Um, it's in the case in you know there's a there's this existing collection, this existing body of works that um, that will be shown in the context of a solo exhibition and then, you know, uh, everyone has different tastes and everyone has different quirky interests that you don't necessarily <coughs> share, so you have to negotiate, oh wow, this is something I would never show in, a, in an exhibition I'm making myself. But, you know, this is a different constellation, what are we actually trying to do? Um, and again, here, I mean, the ego thing applies to, to, to me as well, of course, I'm, not, I'm no saint. It's, it's, you have to let go also and it's, I think, Solo show as group show is very close to the theme of the artist as curator, in a way. Or that's at least that comes with it. That comes with it. Um, yeah. But uh, what what does this mean for your practice? Then you like you are the curator. You go a step back, and um. it's it's a it's a conversation. Definitely, I don't think it's a matter of putting your foot down and saying, no way I am showing this, or no way this is, or we have to show this, I don't care if it's from your, your storage from 10 years ago and you never want to show it again because you're embarrassed of ever buying it. It's, it's, I think it's more about creating a, and in this sense, your role as a curator is, is very classical. Your aim is to build an exhibition that makes sense and is legible um, in, in, a, in a way that tells something about this artist. And in that sense, it has to be a conversation. More so, I guess, than if you're a solo curator making a group show. Um, would there ever be a situation where if an artist wanted to do that, you would be like, no, this is really just a show about your work and that's what I want to do? I guess, I mean, I'm sure as artists you've had these conversations with curators as well where you feel kind of that someone doesn't want to do or show something all that much, but then you, I, I think that's just a healthy process of, of conversation. That there might be, of course, there would be a situation where that happens, but it's never constructive to start, you know, putting ultimatums or, or, or vetoes in these cases. I mean, we're not, we're not dealing with, we're dealing with a very, very subjective matter, so it makes no sense to be strict or rigid in these things, I think. And then probably it's also a question of the artist convincing you about the added value they see in this cooperation. So this question goes to you, Naomi, and you, Mattia. How would you, how would you describe the added value that you have from this kind of um, cooperations? 
you I jump go, in? Yeah, you might start and then we go. Well, I think f f in terms of added value, I think it's just good to any way that you can communicate to viewers what is really going on in your artistic practice is good. So when you're attributing other people in a way that makes sense, that's, that helps inform, and it's an easy way to inform the public that that's what's happening. But I mean, one thing that I'm just, I'm also curious about, because I have other friends who, who do this, and I've, there's been many situations where like a collaborator gets left out and like problems happen. And I'm curious, and, and I guess this is maybe my question. I mean, I, I think you, you seem like such a responsible curator, it's not an issue, but I'm curious just in the general picture, Sometimes I know people who are like, oh no, we want you to be the artist in the show and don't like it when they turn it into this collaboration. So break up break up the collective, break up the marriage. Yeah. Okay. Well not break up the marriage, but like I think sometimes in terms of also communicating to an audience, it's easier to communicate this is one artist and it becomes a challenge for an institution and a challenge for an artist to really explain it, even though I think ultimately it gives greater depth to a, an artist's practice, greater depth to what's happening in the exhibition. So, uh, your question. Um, I'm wondering then if the problem is mainly for the audience uh, to be able to judge a work uh, without knowing uh, about the practice of a whole artist. Because uh, if uh, an artist that usually makes a certain kind of work. One day comes to an exhibition and decide to show something very different, that looks different from his usual work because it's been made in collaboration with someone else. Then, uh, and this collaboration is not a long withstanding one, it's just an occasional collaboration, it's just once in a while. How can you then judge that work? Because it's not part of his her, her practice, uh, how do you, how would you locate it, and how do you communicate about it? Uh, and so I'm wondering if that's one of the elements that may cause some problems. Uh. Okay, so you would say that it's rather actually a question on the level of interpretation and reading, and less a question on the level of production. Or maybe more of a question of what do you expect, uh, and what do you get? Uh. Like, if I'm expecting... <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, credo, credo che, la, che, che, che prima della questione della mostra come group show ci sia la cosa in, veramente importante di, della, di tu, di, della, della collaborazione tra due artisti avvenga prima della mostra. Quello che poi accade con la mostra è una sorta di coronamento, è una sorta di dichiarazione finale ma è quello che avviene prima che secondo me è importante per gli artisti per i due che collaborano perché nel momento in cui collaborano a un, a un lavoro che non è il frutto della loro ricerca personale ma è il frutto della loro cooperazione no? è come se in qualche modo in questo gli artisti si mettessero al servizio dell'opera lavorassero entrambi al servizio dell'opera prima ancora che della mostra quello che veramente credo che sia importante è il, il processo che, che conduce al, al lavoro quella cosa nuova che avviene eh, al termine di questa cooperazione è quello che effettivamente è, è, è qualcosa davanti a cui entrambi quando lo guardano riconoscono una sorta di paternità ma anche di alterità, nel senso che quello che vedono che hanno davanti allo stesso tempo gli appartiene e non gli appartiene. È una cosa nuova, è veramente una cosa nuova, che porta a una dimensione impersonale dell'arte che penso che sia l'essenza stessa dell'arte, in fondo. So, what he just said is what we said a little while ago. So instead, uh, I'm going to maybe uh, read a quotation from Simone Weil, who Mattia introduced me a couple of days ago, which says, so he was saying that a solo show is surely an opportunity for the personal development of an artist and his career, and a moment of recognition. But, as Simone Weil said, the, the Gregorian chant, the Romantic churches, the Iliad, the invention of geometry, did not represent opportunities 
for the development of beings through which they were handed down. Science, art, literature, philosophy, which appear only as forms of development for people, constitute a sphere in which extraordinary, glorious success have been recorded, which keep certain names alive for thousands of years. But over and above this sphere, far above it, separated by a chasm, there is another where four other things are to be found. These things are essentially anonymous. Only by chance, the name of those who have reached it have been conserved or lost. Even if they've been conserved, they have nonetheless become anonymous. Their person has disappeared. Truth and beauty inhabit the sphere of anonymous things, and it is this sphere that is sacred. Um, would you like to add again some of your perspective concerning the added value? Not yet. N no more. Well, I need a second to think about that, but I feel like you know what's beautiful about bringing the idea of like philosophy and science in it, like from Simone Weil. It's like in some ways, sometimes art can be very closed if you look at it as a singular object or a singular author. And I love what you said about there being like a group show in your head, and even this idea of addressing or, or library. It's a or similar. Or library, exactly. It's like it's. This is the tradition. Eh, il, le, la, il group show nella tua testa yeah. è la tradizione no? yeah, yeah. è la tradizione nella quale nel momento in cui o, ogni artista nel momento in cui fa arte non fa qualcosa che si è inventato da solo ma eredita qualche cosa che viene che viene da lontanissimo no? e viene da lontanissimo e lui lo traghetta verso un, 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 un ulteriore lontanissimo no? saying that the division uh, among group show and uh, solo show is a, tr a traditional division because uh, any when a, any artist makes something, uh, it his the ideas, the fact, the uh, even the idea of art, the tradition of art, uh, is necessary something shared that was handed down. Um, I guess, but it's a recent phenomenon that this is like. Um shown and discussed publicly. But there is another, but there, I guess, is another tradition, at least in my view, to um, this solo show is a group show, and that's the collective authorship somehow. And I was on the wondering, because I guess collective authorship has a very different tradition somehow. It's, it often was meant as also a very um, somehow political um, attitude. It was meant as an institutional critique somehow. And I was wondering in how far you would link yourself as well in the artistic practice or in a curatorial practice to these precursors. Are there a point of ref? Do, do you think there are a point of reference for you when you um, um, insist on co-working with others? Well, one thing I always look back at as an artist is how it's very rare that there's a singular artist that doesn't come out of a movement or a group of peers. Like the surrealists, for example, or like abstract expressionists. Like there's so many of these people that have groups together. Um, and I think at that point in time, especially those objects were more at a time where art making was a painting that was presented on the wall and boundaries were less broken down. But even if you look far back, there's still movements. And these movements are created by peers having conversations and exhibitions, both group shows and solo shows. But I think as art practice has been broken down, and I think, you know, for me, what I look at as one of the reference points for myself is feminist art in the 70s. Like when there's more collectives, there's like Women House, there's all these different ways that women are working performatively, having alternate exhibitions, breaking down these different kinds of barriers. And I feel like the way feminism has deconstructed not just gender, but race and economics and all global issues. Like there's so many different ways that it started these deconstruction processes of how you look at art. And I think it's allowed and, and built alternatives because they weren't part of the institution the same way, has created this groundwork for 
creating different kinds of alternatives that are still going on now and are, are still reference points for me at least. Matti and Samuel, yes, please. Uh, vorrei chiedere una cosa a Samuel. Uh, he would like to ask you something. So, uh, prima eh, parlavi di della generosità, cioè dell'artista che coinvolge altri artisti nel suo solo show come una forma di generosità. Before you were asking, you were speaking about an artist that uh, involves other artists in a solo show as an act of generosity. Ma non credi che in fondo se cioè se, se un artista decide di eh, in qualche modo tirarsi un po', farsi un po' eh, di lato e associare il proprio nome proprio quando gli viene offerta una grande opportunità perché questo è il punto no? ti viene offerta una grande opportunità e il fatto di non volere eh, emergere in un, in un modo totalizzante in, que in, in, in quel momento ma di voler mostrare invece un concetto fondamentale del tuo lavoro non sia un atto in realtà di generosità ma più di onestà intellettuale forse He's asking if uh, when uh, an artist is offered an important show or so on the fact of uh, uh, stepping on the side and uh, uh, recognizing that uh, the work of other people may be important to be included in, in his own uh, is an uh, act of honesty, not only an act of generosity, because anyway, uh, such large scale exhibitions are not really done alone. No, I, I have to agree completely, and I think it's always important to be honest about whoever contributed to whatever it is the final result is. Like, I noticed you very consciously mentioned the full names of those two dancers in, in the picture, and I think that's the kind of honesty and generosity that, that, that you also mentioned. Um, and I think that's crucial um, because, like, as I said, not, no one is a sole... In, if you look at it from a, from a meta level, no one is the sole author of anything we do. And I think, especially in cases where multiple people are involved and it's a very laborious process, it's very important to recognize this. Um, yeah. Even, I guess we were talking before getting out here, and it reminds me that one of the things that's so important to me in this attribution of these other artists is that they're incredible singular artists and integral to my art making. Um, Jessie Gold, one of the dancers that I mentioned, I've been photographing her since the mid-90s, and so much of my artwork has changed and become more focused on dance due to her bringing me to so many other dance performances and introducing me to other dancers. And Biba, the other dancer, I mean, she performs with so many people, like Maria Hasabi. She has a PhD in performance history from Columbia. Like, I mean, like, these are incredible, brilliant, educated artists whose main medium is dance. And so often, especially with women who work in performance, there's a certain marginalization that happens, that it's like if you don't constantly attribute to them and almost like list their biography, they might just be looked at as a casual dancer or a casual participant, but it's not. It's like really important, every aspect of their role in the process. Um, and before we, okay, just a short, uh, because we are coming uh, to the end slowly and we wanted to open up uh, the, um, for questions from the public, but if it's a short comment, then it might be <laughs> no problem. Yes, it uh, was a question for Naomi. Um, I was wondering, in uh, your work, uh, um, you always do the visual part uh, and someone else does the dance uh, or uh, do you ever really once in a while I perform <laughs> oh, so you are, but uh, the visual like the paintings oh. it always oh yeah I painted them with my hands and, and w would you <laughs> ever consider collaborating with someone else on the paintings as well eh? or that's just your individual sphere? I've worked with editors who've edited my videos with just you know a certain amount of direction and a lot of control, but in, I mean, there's various things that I do work with other people making them, but in terms of at least painting, for me, painting is more about creating a different kind of way of looking at work that's more about the hand. So for me, paint, at least right now, in the past 10 years, painting is very important to be done by me, but other parts of my practice, it's not so important. So, um, are there any questions from the public? 
Yes, there is one. Perhaps, yeah, you will receive a microphone. Okay. I had a question um, when you're talking about curating. Sometimes um, in doing a collaborative show, does it help you to kind of get a different framework, framework for the artists to kind of understand their mind more? Um, you were speaking earlier about the writer and how because you wanted to present them in a way that people kind of saw beyond just the aesthetics or the writings, but kind of the interplay of his mind. Has there ever been artists, when you're curating a show, that you kind of push them to kind of give honesty or generosity to the artists that really inspire them? Um, and from the artist standpoint, in doing that uh, and recognizing other artists that influence you, uh, does that help your growth and your creativity in any way? Your last question, definitely. It's always interesting. I mean, for those of, I mean, everyone who's been in artist studios, there's always, usually there's some stuff on the wall. They might be press clippings, they might be reproduction of other artworks. Um, and I, that's precisely what I mean. It's very interesting to see the artist's interests. Um, besides that, if I've ever been in a situation where I want them to show more than what they're showing, um, not per se, but there's one project that I'm working on this entire year at Witted Wit. We, um, so our center exists for 25 years this year, and we've commissioned 10 artists to make a work ba of departing from our history and our archive. And some of them um, take it very broadly on a more abstract level. Some of them really zoom in in one exhibition from 1994, that specific work of that specific artist. And then they create this work out of it. And then I, I but this again, I mean, I mean, I, and this is, of course, the, the stupidity of the curator's role. You always have to ask what the artist wants to do. But I think it's also important to ask the question. And in this case, I asked them, do you want to show the departure point along with your work? Which is a didactical move, of course, that I know. But then some artists really don't want that layer exposed to an audience. And I think it's crucial to respect that because it's not... Mediation is not everything, I think, in that sense. And I think artists are very very intelligent in knowing when to show it and when not to show it. Yes, there is another question uh, right here. Hello. I have a question for Ms. Naomi. Um, first, you showed your work together with some uh, performing from um, other people, from some dancers. And I wanted to ask you, do you consider your work complete uh, as your work with the performers, or you just consider the performing act uh, an added extra by somebody else? I mean, you consider the, the completeness of uh, your opera together when it's put to all together, or is it complete also as it is? I think it's complete as it is, that, and then it's activated further with a performance. So I look at them as that particular work as standalone paintings that perhaps question the role of painting. Is it a sculpture? Is it a prop? But it's still ultimately a singular art object. And I think the performance with it activates it and illustrates that question. OK, thanks. So are there any further questions? Not, I guess, okay. Then uh, if, I guess we I, close. If, if I may. Sorry? I think one interesting case is actually happening right next door is the Unlimited one. I think that's a very funny case study of a solo show as a group show. These are supposedly individual statements by artists. It's a mini, mini solo show, but in the context of this fair ground where they have to deal with each other and none of these artists probably expected to be standing next to the one they're standing into. So I guess that's, for their, for their experience, maybe a situation where they're unwillingly part of a group show, but in their minds and in their conception it was a solo show. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and probably we might be very interested, uh, as I think it's a growing phenomenon, actually. It's, it's, we are going to witness probably much more hybridizations um, going on, and I guess we can be curious about that. And I thank all of you to have participated, and thank you for uh, having our guests, for being our guests. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>